Good evening, this is ADBN TV News, the headlines. President Tinubu are the eminent Nigerians call for unity as Christians commemorate Easter. Senate President Gatula Papi returns to Nigeria after 140th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union in Geneva. Central Bank of Nigeria raises capital base for banks with international authorization to 500 billion naira. And on the foreign scene, United States deploys largest crane to clean up Baltimore wreckage after a deadly bridge collapse. And Sport Australia expresses readiness to take on Nigeria in 2024 Olympic basketball encounters. Good evening, I am Sifon Odi. Now the news in detail. President Bola Tinubu has felicitated Christians in Nigeria and around the world as they celebrate the Easter season. President Tinubu in a Friday said statement called on Christians to impart the virtues of love, sacrifice and compassion associated with the season. The president held the resilience and sacrifices of Nigerians, saying it is necessary for economic recovery. He urged Nigerians to be patient over several reforms that have had effect on them and the economy, which according to him will bring more foreign investment to Africa's largest economy. Easter is an event that commemorates the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It also symbolizes Christ's victory over sin and death. President Bala Tinubu has called on religious leaders to refrain from defying or denigrating the nation in their sermons. President Tinubu, who stated this, was speaking to Ramadan Ibta with traditional rulers and religious leaders of the State House on Thursday in Abuja, emphasized the important role of religious leaders in shaping public opinion and fostering a sense of unity among citizens. President, in a statement by Special Advisor on Media and Public Affairs, Ajuri Ngalali, urged traditional and religious leaders to forge a strong bond with the government to defeat terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, and other forms of criminality in the country. He reiterated that no terrorists can defeat the collective will of Nigerians, no matter how hard they try to prey on innocent citizens. Christians have been urged to inculcate the lessons of the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ in their daily activities, particularly during the hard season. This was handed down by the priest in charge of Regina Shirley Catholic Church, Uyo, Aquibum State, Reverend Father Justin Odama, on the events of Easter celebration. Father Odama highlighted the significance of Easter to the growth of Nigerian citizens. ADBN correspondent David Song completes the report. Easter is a celebration festival and cultural holiday commemorating the death, resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, to heaven. The holiday is widely celebrated by Christians across the world as they reflect on the teachings which their Savior Jesus Christ emulated in the Holy Bible. While some Christians use the Easter period to pray and worship, others seize the opportunity to spread love and happiness with their loved ones. Some Christian faithful also carry out a demonstration where they show the station of the cross. Of the Jews, they said, they spat on him and took the sick and hit him over the head. When they had been... However, parish priests of Regina Shelley Catholic Church in Uyo, Akwaibom State, Reverend Father Justin Udoma charged Christians as well as leaders to see the season as the beginning of a new dawn for Nigeria. The thing that is killing Nigeria is selfishness, greed. Everybody, uh, not everybody, very many people who have opportunity, first of all, think of what they can get for themselves. Whatever opportunity it is, even if it is to help set up a, a structure that will benefit the general population, uh, they will think of themselves. Uh, that's where you get corruption, embezzlement, and all this wickedness that happen. And so if we can... Uh, get become served if you can reflect on jesus in the spirit of easter who was selfless especially those of us christians if we christians could be like jesus in our selflessness and acting and doing things for the sake of others um, then easter would be more meaningful um, as an event that helps us to uh, get back on our feet also reverend father leo anthony and pastor Sikana Basiese 
carefully explained the benefit of Easter celebration and its importance to Christians while charging on the need to uphold the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is the season that defines our faith. This is the season that we celebrate the love of God for humanity, the sacrifice of the only Son of God that brought redemption to the old world and made salvation possible. It is a season that we celebrate the love of God and we bring to mind what God did through the sacrifice of his only begotten son. In my own revelation, Easter, Christ came to die for the will he has for us to become powerful. So he also resurrected to sacrifice the will that he has written. So he become the testator and the mediator. That's what we are celebrating this season. Christians all over the world mark Good Friday to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ, Holy Saturday as a day of sorrow, and Easter Sunday for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who ascended to heaven on Monday. David Isong, ADBN News. President of the Senate, Natu Lapabu, and leader of Nigeria's delegation to the just concluded 148th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, IPU, in Geneva, Switzerland, has returned to Abuja. Upon arrival, the Executive Committee member of the IPU informed the media that Nigeria, especially its women, stands again significantly from the delegation's meeting with the Director of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala. There are a lot uh, in terms of uh, interparliamentary cooperation, the exchange of uh, possible future visits, and at the same time, we believe that the image of Nigeria has improved dramatically within the international community. Uh, we also we had a uh, side by bilateral discussions with a lot of uh, parliaments across. Uh, Africa and also across the globe. We also engage in uh, other ventures such as visiting the World Trade Organization and other uh, world bodies like that to discuss on how to improve. The Senate President highlighted his advocacy for stronger parliamentary diplomacy aimed at restoring peace, particularly in Gaza, which has garnered support in major parliaments worldwide, which is also beginning to yield positive results. Shortly after my address, there were reactions, because it, I would say that the world was there. You are talking about 180 countries plus a lot of other countries that are not officially present. But we were there because I, I saw the American delegation and all that. And if you notice, almost everything that I said is what is happening now. Israel has agreed to release prisoners and at the same time, the other side is negotiating to also release uh, hostages. So we believe it's, the major thing now is a ceasefire to allow for humanitarian aid to get to the children. Uh, the women and the people of Gaza and uh, after that we can discuss on sustainable means of bringing peace to that region. By responding to the letter from Senator Abdoningi's lawyer mentioned that while he has yet yet not received the letter from Ningi's lawyer Femi Falana the issue will be addressed amicably akin to a family matter and express hope that Ningi would soon return to the Senate. His Easter message to Nigerians and to Pabio enjoined Christians and would let Jesus Christ by living a sacrificial life of showing love to one another. The Kanu State Command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps says it is deploying about 1,400 operatives across churches as well as strategic locations during the Easter period. The command said the development is meant to ensure peaceful and hitch free Good Friday and Easter Monday festivities across the state. The personnel, according to the statement, were drawn from the various departments of the command to complement the effort of those at the divisional offices in providing adequate security during and after the Easter celebrations. 
Meanwhile, the Niger police force has urged citizens to uphold the values of love, compassion, and empathy towards one another as they celebrate this year's Easter. The force made the call in a statement issued today stating that by working together and remaining vigilant, the people can contribute to enhancing community security. Inspector General of Police Kayade Patokun has reiterated the importance of state of the art technology to improve security in the country. President Tunibu stated these at the Policing Executive Forum in Abuja emphasized that technology will greatly increase effort to combat crime and speed up response time. Our correspondent has details. According to Inspector General of Police, DIG Kayode Ebetokun, the shift towards technology-driven policing presents numerous opportunities for collaboration and innovation in the fight against crime. Egberto Kun, represented by the Deputy Inspector General of Police, DIG Balachiroma, said the challenges currently facing the law enforcement agencies is as a result of inadequate contemporary technological equipment for policing. Of a truth, Providing adequate security in our contemporary society going forward will be mostly cyber dependent and requiring diversified and non kinetic approach. This is a critical aspect of our national security framework as the landscape of law enforcement continues to rapidly evolve. It is therefore imperative that we adopt these changes to better serve and protect our people, communities, and the nation as a whole. Board member of Clean Foundation, Professor Itanibi Alemika, said the fundamental problems of the law enforcement agencies in the country are caused by political, economic, and legal structures. He submitted that Nigeria police can only guarantee security and safety in the country to the extent that the nation's political and economic power holders empower it. The, word, the fact that 90% of police effort in Nigeria, military effort in Nigeria, is towards security is because the economic, social, and political dimension of sources of crime has not been addressed. And that problem has been shifted carefully by the rulers onto the security agency. So let's not have illusion with so, so policing has to do with those kind of activities. On his part, the executive director, Clean Foundation, Gart Peter, said through collaboration and open dialogue, the issues facing law enforcement can be addressed. The challenges we face are multifaceted, ranging from addressing crime and maintaining public safety in fostering trust and accountability within our communities. The good news is that we have gathered together some of the brightest minds in law enforcement to discuss challenges, share best practices, and collaborate in innovative solutions. Other speakers at the forum are representatives of Chief of Defence Staff, Minister of Justice, Chairman Police Service Commission, British High Commission, amongst others. The Policing Executive Forum gathers together critical stakeholders in policing, public safety and security to discuss ongoing security concerns in the country. Awesome Raffle, ADBN News. Rebasted Police Command has paraded and have at least 25 other suspects arrested for series of car thefts and other criminal activities across the state. Commissioner of Police in the state, Olatin Judisu, who stated these were parading the suspects, said the operation unveiled the intricate operations of the criminal network responsible for the theft of over 79 cars stolen from the state. The commissioner highlighted that the apprehension of two primary gang leaders and their associates signifies a notable triumph for law enforcement. The state, while enforcing that the suspect confessed, emphasizing that the suspect confess that majority of the stolen cars are transported to Anambra and Kano State for resale. Some of the suspects that spoke with journalists confessed to the crime. The police recommended that car owners utilize modern technological devices for enhancing car security 
and urge them to exercise caution regarding security measures. Meanwhile, one of the eight persons declared wanted by the defense headquarters in connection to the killing of 17 military personnel in Delta State, the king of Ewo Kingdom in Dugeli South local government area, Clement Ikolo, has torn himself into the state command, Delta State Police Command. Police Public Relations Officer Delta State Police Command Bright Edafe, who disclosed this, said Ikolo arrived at State Police Command headquarters at 6.41 p.m. on Thursday. She reported himself to Police Commissioner Olufemi Abani Wunda. However, in his address to newsmen, the monarch insisted on his innocence on, in the matter. It should be recalled that defense headquarters declared eight persons, including Ikolo wanted, over their roles in the recent killings of military personnel. Meanwhile, police public relations officer Dafi has confirmed that Ikolo has been handed over to the military for the, by the police. I'm really, really very surprised and taken aback that my name as a monarch of the kingdom will appear in a list of wanted persons. I have no hands in killings. I have no hands in encouraging anybody to kill anybody. It is against my philosophy as a human being and my faith as a Catholic. It is against it. it is a, this is a, a serious crime against humanity. And I think it, it, they need to look at the appropriate places. They need to do a, 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 a thorough investigation to know all those who have committed this and bring them to book. And bring Let's see watching ADPN TV News at 7. Join us for more stories after this break. Please stay tuned. ADBN Advocate Broadcasting Network. ADBN Advocate Broadcasting Network. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinions on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. This is Event 360. My name is IT Dennis. My name is Bucci. I'm the Daniel Bassi. Hey everybody, this is Sonny Badu. My name is Imer Bishop Omar. This is your boy, Kenny Black. I'm Hezekiah Walker. My name is Hilda Bassi. Hi, my name is Manuel, BBN Season 6 finalist, Mr. Akai International. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Don't touch it. We'll see you Why you're on board? Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Event 360, anytime, any day. Keep watching Event 360. I need you to keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Don't go away. Make favor to remain lifted and keep watching Event 360. Keep watching Event 360. Event 360. Keep watching. Keep watching Event 360. Keep on watching and never stop watching Event 360. Do not touch that dialogue. Say!
So, you want to catch more of the glitz, the glam, the latest fashion, the cuisines, the rich culture from weddings, shows, parties, conferences, master classes, workshops, awards, festivals, and much more within and outside the Niger Delta? Join Tilly and UM on Event 360 every Saturday by 5 p.m. and the repeat broadcast on Sunday by 3 p.m. And let us take you on the journey on the trends and happenings in the event business within and outside the Niger Delta. For coverage or sponsorship, please call 070 367 07787. Event 360. Welcome back and now to the rest of our stories. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, yes, and week it says 52% of the 2024 statutory budget for the FCT will be allocated for ongoing projects around the state capital. The Minister said this while inspecting ongoing projects in Abuja Municipal Council area. Baisa Wiki also said 42% of the 2024 capital budget will be allocated for new project. FCT correspondent has details. On the 18th of March 2024, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Barry Stanya Somwike, appeared before the Senate Committee on FCT to defend the 1.1 trillion Naira 2024 statutory budget for the Federal Capital Territory. Speaking to newsmen after the inspection of the ongoing road construction in Saburi community, in Abuja Municipal Council area. The minister said implementation of new projects will commence after the assets of the 2024 appropriation bill by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let me say that I did not say we will not embark on new projects. I said we have allocated 58% of the capital projects to the ongoing projects and then 42% for new projects, which I said after the asset of Mr. President to the statutory um, to the appropriation uh, bill, then we'll start the implementation of the new projects in the 2024 statutory uh, uh, appropriation. The minister reiterated on his alignment to President Tinibu's renewal agenda. He said his administration is committed to renewing citizens' lost trust in government. It will not be proper to abandon old projects because they are all public funds. And so we believe that projects that have been awarded before we came and by the mandate of the submitted, you have to make sure those projects are concluded. Arisanya Somwike also inspected the ongoing construction of Gaba Road in Bari Council area. He expressed satisfaction with the quality of work so far. From the nation's capital, Naomi Oleribi, ADBA. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, says it is working with relevant stakeholders to achieve the projections and crude oil production and price benchmark of $77.96 per barrel in 2024. Group Managing Director of NNPCL, Meli Kai, said this on Thursday at the 2024 Society of Petroleum Engineers Energy Forum, adding that with the improved security architecture made available, our production will increase. There is substantial work going on to ensure that we contain the, the incidences of uh, acts of vandals and oil tips on our pipelines. And we're already achieving results to just to put it in context 2022. Uh, we're down to close to a million barrels or less at a point in time. Uh, with the intervention and the improved uh, security architecture that we have in place today, as you recall, we are actually in a day where we also hit close to over 1.7 million barrels. So we know that uh, by the end of the year, we will be able to meet first the budget target for the county. Speakers at the gathering emphasize on the need for adoption of appropriate technology and reducing the environmental impact of fossil fuel and combat all theft and vandalism. In the advancement of energy sector, 
by implementing policies and promoting partnerships that will be beneficial in the transformation from the current energy system to a low carbon energy system. Investing in developing, maintaining, and upgrading existing energy infrastructure is vital towards ensuring a reliable and efficient energy supply. The Transmission Company of Nigeria has successfully restored the national grid following a system disturbance that occurred in the afternoon on Thursday with full recovery achieved that same day. According to a report from the National Control Center in Ashobo, the Shun State Capital, the system disturbance was triggered by a significant reduction in generation capacity primarily due to gas constraints. The imbalance increased stability was exacerbated by the sudden tripping of egg-bin generation turbine 3, resulting in an additional loss of 167 megawatt load and the subsequent collapse of the creed. The center said the creed has, however, been recovered and is stable and is currently transmitting all the generated power to distribution load centers nationwide. A quiet boom state government has aimed the applause of the populace following a recent launch of programs and activities aimed at alleviating the sufferings of the citizenry. The Nigeria Union of Journalists, a quiet boom state council at Congress on Thursday, you commended Governor Moino on the inauguration of the Bow Purchasing Agency Board and the provision of free food for the elderly and vulnerable in the society. The union, in a communique signed by the chairman, Kamred Emos Etu. Secretary Kamre Dominic Akban, Chairman, Communicate Drafting Committee, Kamre Diongo Panoko, appreciated the state governor for award of contract and flag of construction of various roads in the state and urged contractors to work towards meeting the delivery deadline. The union reiterated the need for the National Orientation Agency and Ethical and Attitudinal, Attitudinal Reorientation Commission to step up sensitization against cultism and try and see in secondary schools in the state urging security agencies to collaborate with the Ministry of Education and the local education committee to address the situation. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has reiterated the commitment to the federal government to promote press freedom, noting that a, press -free, a free press society remains the backbone of any democracy. The minister who spoke in Abuja while playing host to the Center for Media and Society assured that top on the agenda of the federal government through its ministry is freedom of the press. The organization was led on the visit by its executive director, Akin Akimbulu, who pledged society's support for the ministry, the federal government, and a renewed hope agenda for Nigerians. Information management is not about propaganda. It's not about uh, saying that not true. It's about projecting the image of government while also protecting rights of citizens to information. And this is what we intend to, uh, we intend to uh, uh, keep. Um, the issue of uh, press freedom, yes, the media uh, industry in this country, I, I still insist, the media is largely free in this country. We may have one or two uh, infringements sometimes, uh, but the media is largely free. The President Bola Ahmed Chinubu intends to make it even freer. Uh, there is no way democracy can thrive if the media is not free. The media has to be free for democracy to thrive, and government is pursuing that vigorously. Uh, we must uh, uh, emphasize that the government of President Bola Ahmed Chinubu, because he himself is a product of, uh, of oppressed freedom, and he cannot in any way attempt to stifle that freedom that he himself has enjoyed. Over now to the foreign scene, where the largest crane on the eastern United States seaboard is heading to Baltimore to launch a massive cleanup effort after the Francis Court Keepage collapse. Shipments in and out of one of the country's busiest ports are suspended while the spanned wreckage hangs over the cargo ship that crashed into it. The search for the bodies of workers remains on hold because of the dangers of diving amongst the wreckage. Eight construction workers were preparing part holes in the Key Bridge early on Tuesday when the Dali container ship veered into one of its columns, sending most of the structure crashing into the water. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said each stage of the recovery and salvage operation would be difficult. 
In his sports news, the head coach of the Australian basketball team, Sandy Brondello, has declared her team's readiness to confront Nigeria's the Tigers and others, the 2024 Paris Olympic group. Brondello announced the provisional list of 26 players on Wednesday, and they are expected to resume camping next week for the Asian Games. The coach admitted that it would be difficult to pick the final roster for the tournament due to the caliber of players they had on the team. She further said they recognized the strength of their opponent, but were ready to give their best. The OZ will face Nigeria in the opening group game. The Confederation of African Football Cup has announced the date for the finals of this season's Champions League and Confederation Cup. The Confederation Cup final will be a two-legged affair with the first leg kicking off on Sunday, May 12, 2024, followed by the second leg on Sunday, May 19, 2024. Nigeria's representative in the Confederation Cup, Rivers United of Portacourt, will face Algeria's USM Algeria in the quarterfinals. For the Champions League, the final will also be played over two legs, with the first leg taking place on Saturday, May 18, 2024, and the second leg on Saturday, May 25, 2024. Nigerian teams Enyimba and Ababa and Remo Stars of Ikene were unable to progress beyond the qualifying rounds of the Champions League this season. After 183 matches in the 2023 Aquaibum State Governor's Cup for the 31 local government areas of the state, Ikora Basi local government area has emerged champions after defeating your local government area 4-3 on penalties. The regulation time ended 1-1 and the game went into the penalty kickout at the Uyo Township Stadium. Early in the third place match of the tournament, Urofong Oroko defeated a Sienadum one goal to nil to clinch the bronze medal. The champions Ikora Abbas local government area smiled home with 5 million naira. First runners of Uyo went home with 3 million naira. The third place team, Rofung Oroko, got 2 million naira. And that's it on ADBN TV News at 7. Remember to check our website from our stories on adbntv.com. You can also watch us live from every part of the world by logging on to adbntv.com slash live. Thank you for watching. I am Sifon Ode. Good night.